video is all about Rome travel anxiety. Yes, a lot of travelers get anxious about going to Rome and really anywhere. But in Rome, there are several things that I'm gonna share with you in this video that can alleviate a lot of that stress, a lot of that anxiousness about going to Rome, such as pickpockets, getting taxis, where to stay, just all kinds of good information that will help you be more relaxed when you visit Rome. When you arrive in Rome, after a long flight, you'll probably be tired, anxious, and maybe a little bit agitated. So getting to your hotel the easiest way is very important. There are three options when you arrive in Rome. First of all, you can take the bus. Now the bus is the least expensive option. It costs between six and eight euros. There are several companies to choose from, a little bit confusing, but if you wanna take the bus, you can certainly find a bus there at the station to take you right to the Termini train station. The second option, which I think is a lot less stressful, is the Leonardo Express. That is the train that runs directly from the Fiumicino Airport to the Termini train station. That costs 14 euros per person, but the good thing is the train is direct. There's no additional stops. It takes about 40 minutes, so it's actually pretty stress-free and it's very easy to find from baggage claim. There are signs directing you right to the Leonardo Express train. No problem there. But if you're like me, after a long flight, it's already stressful enough. It's easiest just to get a taxi. The taxis run, it's a flat 55 euros. But the good thing about a taxi is it will take you directly from the airport right to the front door of your hotel or Airbnb. No need to transfer or to figure out what to do once you get to Termini, as the taxi will take you directly there. Now, taxis are super easy to get at the airport. You don't need to pre-book those. Just follow the signs that say taxi. Just as you exit the airport, you're gonna see them. They're lined up and uh, just hop in a taxi and off you go. Super easy, super convenient. For me and for my wife, after a long flight, taxis are the way to go. Once you are situated in Rome, you're going to want to go out and explore the city. It's a great city. It's a big city. You can walk to many places depending on where you're staying, but chances are you're still going to want to get onto the metro or to the bus at some time while you're there, maybe a lot of times while you're there. So knowing how to get onto those is important. Now you can purchase tickets at any tabac aisle. They're single use tickets. They're one and a half euros. You can also purchase what they call 24 hour passes. 48 hour passes, 72 hour passes, but the best option is just to use the system they implemented maybe two years ago called Tap and Go. I'll put a link in the description with a video that explains it more in detail, but essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna tap your credit card or phone like Apple Pay right on this receiver inside the bus or at the turnstiles going into the Metro. And the nice thing about Tap and Go is while it is one and a half euros each time, if you do use it more than like seven euros worth of times in a 24 hour period, let's say you go on there 10 times, that would be 15 euros. The max it's gonna charge you in a 24 hour period is seven euros, making tap and go by far the most convenient way and easiest way to access Rome's public transportation. A lot of people coming to Rome have anxiety about how safe is Rome. Are they gonna become victims of pickpockets? Do you know what a pickpocket looks like? Well, I've got a video to show you. See if you can identify who the pickpockets are. So did you notice the pickpockets? You probably did, but let me show you again in case you missed it. Okay, there's gonna be two girls that enter the scene. There they are right there. Now, as you see them come forward, you're gonna notice they have bags or coats covering their arms so that they can pickpocket without people noticing them. There's their bags. And the one on the left notices me right away, cars covering her face, but the one on the right is not quite sure where I'm at. And she says, right behind. And 
boom, she notices me right there and she covers her face. And those are your typical pickpockets in Rome. Probably not what you expected them to look like. You know, your young, innocent, attractive girls. Well, some of them are out to get you. So if you noticed the pickpockets in that one video I showed you before telling you who they were, you were paying attention. And that's the same thing you have to do when you're in Rome. You really have to pay attention. Just assume everybody's a pickpocket. I know that's a bad way to look at things. Maybe that's not the best advice, but just look for people that maybe you can't see their hands. If they have bags in front of them or coats over their arms or things like that to kind of obscure their hands, they could be pickpockets and just move away from them. So pay attention when you're on the subway, when you're in crowded areas like Trevi Fountain, you're in the stations, the Termini station, all those areas are known for pickpockets and just pay attention. That will go a long ways to keeping you from being pickpocketed, keeping you from having to go to the embassy, maybe replacing your passport or other things like that, which can be a real nightmare. And uh, we don't want that to happen to you. That's why you just need to pay attention. Don't be afraid. Just be attentive as you uh, tour the city of Rome. Every YouTube video you watch, they always ask you to give them a thumbs up. So I'm not going to do that. Now I want to talk briefly about some of the other scams. There are scams wherever you travel, and some of the more common ones in uh, Rome are the petition. They want you to sign a petition, usually about keeping kids off drugs or something like that. They really don't need your signature for any reason. What they really want is your money. So as you're signing the petition, they're going to try to sell you to give them you know, additional money, five or 10 euros. So that's what they're really after. And you know, if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. Another pretty common scam is when people try to hand you things for free. They hand you bracelets or they hand you flowers. They're not free, they want money. So just don't accept things if people are handing them to you. Those are the most common scams. There are other little scams as well, but again, none of them are that big a deal compared to being pickpocketed. When you arrive in Rome, hopefully you already have a location of where you're going to base from. Picking the right location is very important. There is no one perfect location for everybody. In fact, in Rome, there are many great locations. I created a video where I explore many of Rome's locations, along with a couple that I think that aren't that great. I'm going to put a link to that video in the description of this video. Take a look at that. That will really help you when you know, to determine what is the right location for you. But I will say that picking the right location can greatly reduce your anxiety and it will allow you to really enjoy your time that you spend in Rome. Getting tickets in Rome. So what sites do you really need to pre-purchase tickets for? There are really only two, the Vatican Museum and the Colosseum. First, let's talk about the Vatican Museum. By purchasing those tickets online, and I will leave a link in the video description of the official site to buy those, um, you don't have to stand in line to purchase tickets once you get to the museum. If you don't have those tickets in advance, you will have to stand in a pretty long line just to purchase tickets. But if you've pre-purchased your tickets, you still have to stand in a small line, it's a fast moving line, that gets you in directly into the uh, Vatican Museum, saving you a lot of time. Now, buying those tickets online, unfortunately, there is a, you know, a, a convenience fee, I guess. It's around five euros per ticket that you have to pay, but it's probably worth it because it does save you, you know, one, even two hours just standing in line waiting to buy tickets. The second place you really should have tickets purchased in advance is for the Colosseum. The Colosseum tickets also includes entry into the Roman Forum, and I'm gonna also put the official link for those tickets in the description of this video to help you out there. Buying them through third parties is fine. You are typically gonna pay a little bit more than if you bought them directly through the Coliseum official website. So those tickets I think are 18 euros. Again, they include entry into the Roman form as well. And they're for a specific time, so you do need to show up on time for those tickets. Again, it allows you to skip the line of those that have to buy tickets when they get there. Many people do, believe it or not, they show up at the Coliseum, don't have tickets and have to stand in line to purchase those tickets. 
You can do that, but there is one thing you should know. If you do stand in that line to purchase tickets, sometimes you get up to the front of the line to purchase those tickets, and the entry into the Coliseum isn't sometimes for two, three, four hours later, which is kind of inconvenient. Definitely get those tickets in advance before arriving at the Coliseum. Having those tickets will allow you to skip that big long line going directly into the Coliseum at your allotted time, making it super convenient. It looks like in 2025, they're working on a plan to actually have tickets to visit the Trevi Fountain. Now, it's not the entire Trevi Fountain. You can still enter the piazza for free and see Trevi Fountain. But if you want to get up and close, down by the water, more than likely they're going to implement a ticket program. And the ticket will be online tickets only. That's the only way of purchasing them. You'll need to have a ticket online if you want to get down close to the Trevi Fountain, which actually is a great thing because right now, Every time I go there, it's so crowded, it's really hard to enjoy the Trevi Fountain. It's hard to take pictures because of the amount of people that are down by the fountain. Limiting that to the people that buy tickets and they can kind of control the amount of people they let in there at any one time will probably create a much better experience for those that visit the Trevi Fountain. While those that want to pay and have that up close view can do that, those that just want to come into the piazza and observe from a little bit further away can also do that making it a win-win for both people. I think it's gonna be fantastic in my opinion. While I don't know exactly how it will roll out in 2025, I do believe your overall experience will be improved compared to what it is currently. Many people when in Rome try to all go to the highest rated pizzerias, the highest rated restaurants, the highest rated coffee shops. The real trick is to avoid the dogs. Don't Go to any restaurant, any floor in Rome, without at least checking on TripAdvisor, on Google reviews, check something to make sure you're not walking into a trap. That's the best way. When I'm in Rome, I'm not necessarily trying to eat the best food. I'm trying to avoid the worst food. I'm interrupting this video briefly to tell you about our new Rome travel guide. Our travel guide has over 10 hours of videos to help you plan and have a great time in Rome. Also included is a 70 plus page PDF that you can download and there are GPS maps. This is my favorite part. We get to share with you many of Rome sites, but not just that, many of our favorite restaurants, our favorite gelaterias, and so much more. The guide is less than $20 when using our discount code. I'm gonna put the discount code in the description of this video. Take a look at it. It's a great way to help us out as we help you have a great time in Rome. One thing that can be stressful about visiting Rome are the crowds. Rome can get very busy and very crowded. It's a popular city, right? And um, visiting, in the off season is not always an option. So if you're gonna visit in peak season, one of the easiest ways to avoid a lot of the crowds is to get up early in the morning. The city itself really doesn't get that crowded until around 11 a.m. You know, before that, you know, a lot of trains are, are heading to Rome with a lot of people, tens of thousands of people heading to Rome, but they aren't in the city just yet. And uh, others are still asleep in their, you know, condos, apartments, hotels. So touring the city up until around 11 a.m., the crowds are very minimal. But as those people arrive into the city, the city does start to get pretty crowded, especially at the tourist sites like the Trevi Fountain and the Spanish Steps and some of the others. Those areas kind of bottleneck with a lot of people. But the good news is the trains that brought all those people in start taking the people back out of the city, you know, four, five, six in the afternoon. And the evenings in Rome, again, are relatively quiet, relatively, even in peak season. And it's a great time to be out and just explore the town. It's a little crowded between, let's say, 11 and 5. And sometimes it can be a little hot during those times. So maybe it's a good time to go grab lunch somewhere, or just get out of the sun and uh, avoid the crowds. Head out to, you know, via Appia Antica or to Aqueduct Park or take a walk along Tiber River. There's lots of things you can do to avoid the crowds in Rome and kind of still have a nice intimate experience even in peak season. If you enjoyed videos like this one, our videos are all about Rome. Please consider subscribing. To the next one, alla prossima, ciao. Ciao, ciao. I don't know how to do the dap. The
whatever you call it.